Well, I only spent one week at church camp as a kid. It was a memorable week. For church camp where I grew up was Camp Chautauqua on the shores of Lake Chautauqua. And the camp that I was assigned to, well, for that week at least, we learned how to sail on the lake. We lived, we breathed, we talked sailing. By the end of the week, we were all ready to buy our own sailboats and sail the ocean. But before we got there, there was lots of work to do. There were chores, there were Bible studies, there were other things that we had to do besides sail. And our counselor kept us grounded, kept us focused by reminding us that if we got everything done on Friday, we would take our boats and we would sail across Lake Chautauqua to the Chautauqua Institute on the other side. A grand journey. We planned, we talked. We were ready for that day. And so when breakfast was over on Friday, we packed our boats and set sail. And oh, what a journey it was. And we got about halfway across the lake. And then the winds died. There wasn't a breeze stirring. Now, our counselor was a bit of an idealist when it came to sailing. And so he refused to let us pack oars. And so there we were at the mercy of the wind, or should I say, lack of wind. We sat there for several hours until finally there was a breeze. And then we were faced with a dilemma. Do we continue our journey across the lake given the hour of the day or do we make it back to home base the decision was finally made that we will return to camp and it turned out to be a fortuitous decision because as we got to within sight of camp we noticed that there was a fury of activity Things were being taken care of, other things battened down. And it was then that we recognized there was a storm brewing. And oh, what a storm raged across that lake in almost seconds. One of our boats capsized. And the rest of us were on the edge of panic. What do we do? It was at that point that our counselor began to calmly bark orders. One of our boats made sure that the others in the capsized boat were all okay and helped them to shore. Others were told to take sails down and how to prepare the boats. We got to shore, we dragged the boats up, we battened everything down so nothing would blow around. And then we made our way to our cabin, safe. Looking back, that counselor functioned, as my good friend Andy Carlson used to say, a non-anxious presence in the midst of the storm. He kept us focused on what we needed to do, what we were called to be as sailors and how to function in the midst of the crisis, in the midst of the chaos and the confusion. And because of that, we were all safe. 
delivered to shore, unharmed. Jesus functions as that non-anxious presence time and time again in the midst of some very harrowing times in Scripture. We see him in a boat in the midst of the storm. As the disciples are getting antsy about their future, about whether or not they will survive this storm, Jesus is asleep on, in the back of the boat. Talk about a non-anxious presence. They finally wake him up, want to know if he doesn't care. And his response is, is kind of interesting. Don't you have any faith? And with that, he gets up and with a word, be still, shut up, knock it off. The winds died down and the waves returned to calm. And there is peace. Shalom. The church, we as Christians, are called to be a non-anxious presence in the world as followers of Jesus. And yet, over the last few years, the church has been one of the last places that I found a non-anxious presence. In fact, it's been a very anxious presence. A presence that oftentimes feeds and fuels the anxiety and the confusion and the chaos that the world around us exhibits. Have we forgotten who's in the boat with us? You see, that's what happens with the disciples. They don't remember who Jesus is at that point. Perhaps they hadn't quite figured it out. This is a, a critical story in, in Mark's gospel because they recognize that only the gods can still the storms. So maybe we need to rethink who this Jesus is. Maybe we need to rethink who this Jesus is. Have we forgotten that he's in the boat with us? Have we forgotten that it's his boat? Do we think it's all about us? About whether or not we'll have a church? What that church will look like? What kind of people will allow in that church? What the role of the church is in the world? I hear a lot of church talk. But very little Jesus talk. Maybe the question is, do we need to remember once again who's boat and who the captain is? It would do us well in the midst of these times of anxiety and confusion and chaos to do just that. To recognize that Jesus is with us. It's why we gather for Sunday morning. It's why we baptize. It's why we gather together for the meal. That we might remember that Jesus is truly present in our midst. And he will still the storms of our lives. Even in the midst of troubled times. And so, as we go forth across the seas of our lives, let us remember whose boat we're in and have peace. Shalom.